Good morning. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc. and Alternative Parties Books Publisher sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Welcome to Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Today we have a Michael Lavery who's running for office under the Green Party ticket. He's going to talk to us about his exciting campaign he's got going. So welcome to the podcast, Michael. Hey, Andrew. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Michael, let us get started by you kindly giving us an introduction to yourself, a brief biographical sketch. Sure, absolutely. My name is Michael Lavery. I'm currently a select board member in the town of Beckett, Massachusetts, a town of 1,800 registered voters. And we're in Berkshire County here in Massachusetts, in western Massachusetts, near the New York border. Uh, I've been a select board member for five years. I'm in my second term, and I'm currently seeking office as a state representative for the Berkshire 3rd District. Uh, We were recently redistricted, so that's uh, 18 towns in the southern Berkshire County, and uh, I'm running against a 20-year incumbent uh, who usually runs unopposed. So it got a lot of press initially, and uh, I'm happy to, to run because I think more people should run because we are the leaders that we're looking for. We can't wait for other people to run. Yes, exactly. Great sentiments. Okay. So kindly, kindly yeah. tell us what led you to the Green Party in the first place. Well, I spent 30 years plus in the Democratic Party, and in Massachusetts we had a, a great mayor in Holyoke, Mass., called Alex Morris. He was openly gay and a young person in his 20s at the time when he was elected, and he was doing a great job for his community. He decided to run against Richie Neal, who's in the federal uh, Congress, um, and he's a, a big position there. He's the head of the Budget Committee, Budget and Finance. So he has a lot of friends, and I don't know what happened, but uh, a bunch of college students in the Amherst area decided they would start a smear campaign against Alex Morse. So this is a long way of saying that they did bad things and the Democratic Party was complicit. Uh, So I decided to leave for those reasons and because the DNC did some bad things with Bernie and his campaign twice in a row. So whenever I took polls that said, you know, which party should you be in, I always said Green Party. And like a lot of people, I thought that um, third party – couldn't get a lot done, but now I would never go back to the Dems, and I, I want to do all I can to make the Green Party uh, as good as it can be. Um, so it's really the party for me. I think climate change is real and human-caused, and that's one of their major planks. Uh, I don't know if the other two parties will do anything, and, and that's part of the problem. So um, we might be in a situation where we can't stop climate change and we have to just mitigate it as much as we can. But I I want to do all I can to make people aware of the issues. Sure. So on your profile that I read on the Green Party page, it said you are with the Green Rainbow Party. Kindly right. explain what the Green Rainbow Party is and what it means. Sure. The Green Rainbow, well, you're familiar with the Green Party. And people are, people don't know much about the Rainbow Party, but it was something called the Rainbow Coalition. And initially it was rainbow meaning multicolored, like black people and yellow people and all color skins. Um, and it was also a party for poor people, poor white people, um, that felt disenfranchised. And I don't know the full history of it, but in Massachusetts had a Rainbow Coalition. And Green Party, and they decided at what po- at one point that they were both thinking the same thoughts and for the same issues. And even though there were some places where they disagreed, they figured it was better to unify and gain strength in that way than to be separate and not have as much um, effectiveness. So the Green Rainbow Party was formed and uh, was ratified, and Massachusetts has recognized it as one of the undesignated parties. And occasionally we do get um, enough votes uh, to be an accepted party, third party, 
Massachusetts. Cool. Mm-hmm. So since you since you ran for that Beckett board position, you won the race and you've been serving in the interview. race. So since you won the board position and you ran for the race and you've been serving in the board position for a couple of terms, kind of yeah. tell our audience what you learned from those experiences. Well, it's tough to get things done, and it takes a long time in municipal politics. So that's one thing I've learned, that there's a long tail on a lot of plans and projects because funding and grants and monies don't come uh, that easily, uh, and there's opposition. And anything you do by committee takes a long time, and that's another thing I've learned, that your your, uh, fellow select board members don't always agree. I've been a Toastmaster for 10 years, and I'm good at presentation and speaking, and we're, we're uh, I, I learned a lot from that, so oh my. I, even though I'm kind of an introvert, I I have uh, public speaking skills and, and ability to communicate, so that helped a lot. Um, I think that climate change uh, is a big issue, and I got a trail created, I got four energy uh, electric vehicle parking stations, and I got uh, a plastic bag ban bill enacted in the five years that I have been in office. So I think for a short term and for a small town, that's a lot uh, to get done. Sure. Yeah, it sounds like you did your work. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. So I'm earlier, just having him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Earlier, you were discussing some of the details of your district. You were mentioning that they were, you were describing it. So, kindly tell us the demographics of the area. Is it rich? Is it poor? Is it, is it diverse? Is it rural, urban? What's it like? Uh, it's very rural, rural, but we get a lot of second homeowners that are from the New York City metropolitan area. We've got a lot of second homeowners that are, um, retired or or they have a family elsewhere um, and call the Berkshires their summer home. They may have uh, a winter home down south in Florida. So it's a mix. There are people who live here full time that are lower income and they're the service workers and people who clean houses and do the jobs that need to get done for those second homeowners. And then there are people like myself who are in IT and live here full time that have uh, just enjoy nature, enjoy the outdoors. It is countries, um, but we have a, quite a good mix uh, of backgrounds. Um, we are predominantly white, I would say, into the 90 percentile on the last census. So we aren't diverse in that regard, but we do have a lot of stratifications for the class class levels. Sure. So how do you plan to implement your green vision in the race and if you get elected in the office itself? Massachusetts is doing a fairly good job. We have a t- uh, 20-year plan. By 2050, they want to get off of carbon-based um, fuels entirely and want to be net neutral or carbon neutral, sorry. Um, we That is pretty progressive in terms of other states, but I think we can do better. Uh, My current senator, Adam Hines, wants it to to be done before 2035, and there's a bill that just passed the Senate um, that's more aggressive. Uh, I want to make sure that they stick to those plans, and if they can get the 2035 one done, then that would be even better. So I support that, and I will, if I get elected, um, make sure that happens and do my best to put that forth. I think we can have full fleets of electric vehicles in busing and uh, transportation and police forces and all sorts of ways. Um, Electric's the way to go. I own an electric vehicle, and we have solar on the house. Uh, So we're trying to do it with baby steps. Everybody should try to do as much as they can. I know it's expensive, but the costs are going down, and with gas prices going up, it, it makes sense financially. Yes. So how does it work at your home? Is it is it the same as regular electric electricity, or is it 
different in how it functions. So the EV car runs on a 220-volt circuit, so it's um, double what's regular for an outlet, but it was easy to get installed by a regular electrician, and there, there's a charger that was um, – I got a refund from the state, and I also got a, a tax right off from the federal government from for my car, so I was able to – do pretty well, uh, and I've been getting solar rebates on the solar energy. Uh, we sell it back. It's called uh, net metered, so I um, don't charge batteries, but I send it back to the grid. Okay. And the power company uses it, but then they pay me for the power that I've generated. Oh, my. That's an interesting way to do it. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So what strategy do you have for the campaign? How are you planning to reach all these voters in your area? We're um, we're a grassroots. It's totally shoestring. Um, I'm just self-funding right now. I have a full-time job at an accounting firm and a family and kids, but I've taken a PR degree and I have a master's in public relations, so I have connections. Um, I've been a communications director uh, as a volunteer job for the local Democratic Socialists of America, and okay. they're going to support me um, like I supported them as uh, a communications director, and that's about 80 people. And I've also got the local Green Party in Berkshire County, which is another 100 or so. So we've got a pretty tight-knit network, and I should be able to call on them to do things like door knocking and phone banking and sending out emails and things. We we have a text utility called Spoke, which I can utilize, and it sends like 100 texts in a couple minutes, and it's all automated through the web so I can answer uh, the texts on the fly. So I think we've got um, a, grass, a ground game. I think we can challenge this 20-year incumbent. I, I don't think he has as good of a social media game as we do, and um, young people are more involved nowadays, and that's how we're going to reach them. Sure. So you mentioned that incumbent. Is he Republican or Democrat? He's a Democrat. Is he is he liberal, conservative, moderate? How would you classify him? Is he close to you at all? He's a blue dog Democrat. He's very conservative. Um, he's helped me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a local select board member, and we'd have to call on him to help out. So, I mean, he's responsive. I don't call him uh, non-working. Or, he's doing his job, but he's definitely um, just barely left the center. I mean, he's not progressive in my eyes, so I think he's got a long way to come, to come left, uh, and I'm very left of him, so. That's where I'm running at. He 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 doesn't uh, believe in transparency, and I've that's one of my major planks is truth and transparency. Okay. The, Common, the Commonwealth doesn't have um, rules and regulations for the legislators, so their votes are not really counted. They don't have uh, roll call voting, so a lot of times things will just get gaveled through by the chair of the uh, house, and and people don't know how they're con. The constituents don't know how their legislators have voted, so I'm going to try to change all that, and I think that's a, a, a gap in who I'm running against uh, where you can see daylight between me and him. That's good. So for our audience out there, whether they live in your area or they live elsewhere, how can they support your campaign? Oh, you can go to my website, michaelavery.com, and check it out, and there's a donor box there. Um, we've got everything set up so it goes through the uh, Office of Campaign Finance, and uh, people can make a donation online, or they can send a check. Uh, you can fill out the contact info, and I'll give them uh, my address so they can mail me um, a donation if they're interested. Thanks for asking, Andrew. Sure thing. Thanks for your support. Yeah. Sure, sure thing. Michael, thank you kindly for coming on the podcast today and talking about your campaign. We wish you all the best in your campaign and all your other personal endeavors. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. I'll look for the link to the podcast. We'll check you guys out on the web. Excellent. All right. Take care. All, right. all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.